Just days after the administration announced that it would strip visas from foreign college students who can't report to classrooms due to the COVID shutdowns, it reversed course. That would have subjected a million students to possible deportation. By the way, these are the type of people we want in this country. Recent study shows that international students contribute $41 billion to the U.S. economy annually, and they support nearly half a million jobs. Now, as soon as the rule came down early this month, the opposition exploded. Harvard and MIT, they sued. Then the attorneys general of 17 states did the same. And just this week, 15 Republican members of Congress even signed a letter urging the White House to get rid of this new rule. Now, even though the White House did backtrack, there were some very real consequences. Several students were reportedly barred from entering the country because their schools were going to online classes and others booked plane tickets to fly home ahead of possible deportation. I want to bring in our guest. She's the attorney general who led the multi-state suit against the government, Maura Healy. The Massachusetts AG joins us now. And uh, thank you for the time, first of all. But I got to tell you, the more I read about the whole plan to this, I'm still left with un wondering why. What was the goal the administration was even trying to achieve? These kids had visas. They were here legally. I went through some of the math. This is, we want to keep these people here, let alone get rid of them. I never understood what the upside that they were trying to achieve was. You know, Richard, I can only speculate. This has been an administration that has been very anti-immigrant, anti-foreigner. Um, I think Trump has used that in an attempt to gain political advantage. I think you saw that with the travel ban, with the DACA program, which we also uh, saved in court. And you see this now um, action out of ICE. I also think that, um, you know, there was an effort to probably prove that things are going fine in the country, that we're coming out of the coronavirus pandemic by being able to point to our colleges and universities and show that there were students actually on campus, like everything is back to normal. But there was no sound reason for it. And in fact, it was so detrimental to public health. The idea that you'd force colleges and universities to stop online learning and resume in-person learning would just put students and faculty at risk. And as you mentioned, these international students not only contribute to our campus life in significant ways, um, but also contribute to our economy. $42 billion last year alone is what we uh, deem that what we be believe that these international students contributed to the U.S. economy. So no sound reason. That's why we felt very good about our legal challenge and obviously feel uh, very good about the victory in, in seeing ICE rescind this rule. It, it seemed to come out of left field. I'm wondering, did the administration even um, consult you guys ahead of time saying we're thinking of doing this plan, let alone the colleges across the country? Um, and when they finally rescinded it, was there even conversation that you knew it was coming? It, it just seemed this thing was half-baked and implemented without any rhyme or reason. Yeah, well, unfortunately, we've seen uh, that a lot from the administration. So it's sort of more of the same. We certainly weren't consulted, uh, nor were colleges and universities. If any of us had been, we'd have been the first to say this is a really dumb thing to do. Um, as for why they rescinded, I don't know. There was significant pressure pressure brought to bear by these lawsuits, by actions by state AGs and, and the universities. Um, and even from the business community, I'm sure there was a lot of outcry there because these international students, not only are they in labs right now and in programs, including graduate programs, where they're studying things like how to cure the coronavirus or how to create vaccines, um, they also oftentimes will stay in this country and really grow businesses, contribute to um, so many aspects of, of industry. And so it was, it's, it's hard to explain, Richard. I'm just glad to see that it's gone away. I will say, though, if the Trump administration tries to come back with uh, a 2.0 version of this, um, we'll take them to court again. Um, you know, I also, by the way, spoke to a few university presidents. And, you know, not that economics should drive this because there's a right and a wrong, but they were like, these are the dream students as we're hemorrhaging money right now. These kids are paying the full boat here. Um, they're integral to our student body. They were coming up with ideas that once a semester they were going to have everybody go outside. It was, it was crazy what they were on the precipice to try and figure out. But this, if anybody has the idea there's no harm, no foul, nobody got hurt during this. It was just, you know, chapter 20,000 of the craziness of the last three and a half years. They'd be wrong because you got to meet 
some of these kids. Um, and some of them paid a price, didn't they? Oh, big time, Richard. You know, just imagine the, the fear, the anxiety of, of uh, not knowing whether you're going to be deported, not knowing whether you should, should sign a lease for a year, um, being told you've got to go back to your country. But, oh, by the way, it turns out your country is not going to take you right now because they're banning people in from the United States due to the staggering rates here of coronavirus in this country. So absolutely devastating and, and harmful. Um, and I know of students who were turned away at the border um, and went back home. And that, that harm is irretrievable. You know, and there are students who are here, Richard, in this country, again, already partway through their studies, who all of a sudden were told that they're going to have to go back home. I mean, there are some in relationships. Um, there are some who are working jobs here. There are some that, you know, were, were just a few credits away from, from graduating. It was insane. And then the burden on our colleges and universities, who really carefully had mapped out how they were going to do remote learning, you know, to all of a sudden... Um, be told essentially by ICE and the Trump administration, no, it's our way or the highway. You can't do that. It's so disruptive and so unnecessary. And as you say, not without consequence. You know, um, I, this reminded me because when we were having um, another immigration issue along the border with the family separations and the kids put in cages, I went down there and you see the kids and it's not just a number and there's a, there's a real life or lives attached to it. There was an intentional, my opinion at least, cruelty. Where, I mean, who comes up with an idea to put a kid in a cage and who puts an idea to intentionally separate a family? Fine. You want to have border policies, there's a way to do it. But you don't do it to hurt kids and hurt families. This had the same whiff of it. I don't know if you felt the same way. Just because you could stick it to somebody, who was here legally, by the way, it... it Again, there's that element of cruelty that I haven't seen in the past, but it has a Stephen Miller fingerprints all over this thing. All Stephen Miller couldn't agree with you more. And in fact, in our complaint that we filed in federal district court, we called this action cruel. It's cruel. It's inhumane. Um, but as have been so many of the policies that have come out of the Trump administration and certainly um, all of the policies put out by Stephen Miller. And, you know, it's, again, this is a, a xenophobic, anti-immigrant, anti-foreigner uh, agenda. And it's one that is not good for the uh, health and well-being of this country, um, including our own economic self-interest. And, you know, heartbreaking to, to see these kids. I was at a rally the other day with many of them, Richard, um, undergraduates and graduate students, and they are the best and the brightest studying, contributing so significantly to our colleges and universities, and to think that they had to live with the fear um, that they were going to be deported is it, just is just so, so wrong. Well, it was not a good look for our country here, but I'm, I'm really glad uh, you prevailed here uh, along with the other attorney generals who attached themselves uh, to your suit. Um, thankfully, there won't be a 2.0 version of this, or at least fingers crossed. Attorney General Maura Healy, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you. Great to be with you, Richard. Thank you. Up next, everyone, the president playing the race card again. Is that all a part of a re-election strategy? And if so, who really thinks it's a good idea to try and win votes that way? After the break, we'll discuss and we'll debate.